What's thick on one end and tapers to a thin edge? It's called a simple machine and it's called the wedge. Often made of stone, wood, metal, or plastic, I do pledge a simple machine. Triangular in shape is called the wedge. A wedge's main job is to be used as a splitting tool with force directed on top of the wedge. You force an object to split in two. Some examples of a wedge are listed and shown here. An axe, knife, doorstop, nail, or snow plow I do share. Here is a wedge. It's used for splitting cord wood. We start by placing the sharp edge of the wedge on top of the wood. Before the wedge can split the wood, it needs a force to direct it down. We'll use a sledgehammer to hit the flat part of the wedge with a pound. When the force is applied to the top, Instance that drives into the piece of the wood, overcoming the wood's resistance. The force directed downwards forces the wood's direction to change as one piece becomes two pieces from the wedge in its exchange. There are two main types of wedges. You will find a single and the double. Let's find out how these are defined. The single wedge has only one angle side, like how a doorstop or a chisel is designed. The double wedge has two angled sides, using double the force when it's applied. What's thick on one end and tapers to a thin edge? It's called a simple machine and it's called the wedge. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I'm the second of two rovers launched in 2003 I search for ancient water on Mars, I'm opportunity After landing on Mars in 2004 I made a number of discoveries One was minerals dispersed by groundwater causing rock cavities I happen to be a record holder lasting 15 years on Mars I was planned for a 90 day mission on the red planet among the stars I'm the twin of a robot called Spirit that launched before for me. Here's a look at my parts, we'll explore and see. I have panoramic cameras on the top of my camera bar to show NASA what I see on Mars near and far. I've sent 217,594 raw images back to Earth to be reviewed by scientists. The miniature thermal emission spectrometer or mini test you now see provides measurements of mineralogy and thermal physical properties. Magnet array is in the front of me, grabbing dust at a mass, collecting magnetic grains of the red planet's past. The pan cam calibration target looks like a sundial with a tin. It helps fine tune observations from imagers and instruments. My robotic arm instruments do work as a human geologist would, holding and using science tools with its hand or turret like it should. I have six wheels to truck me around the Martian surface you see I have traveled 28 miles and down slopes at 32 degrees this is my multi-panel solar array generating 140 watts of power up to four hours per soul a Martian day the storm stopped me on my record-breaking lawn mission in 2018 I permanently stopped transmitting information on the second of two rovers launched in 2003 I search for ancient water on Mars I'm opportunity On the Karo satellite, my mission was a delay. I was set out to bring rocket planets outside the solar system into sight. And I found extrasolar planets with short orbital periods, mostly those of large terrestrial size to show adults and kids the name Karo when broken down. It does mean convection, rotation, and planetary transit. That is me. I was launched on December 27 in 2006 atop the Suez 2.1. 1B rocket. I had opened the way for more advanced probes such as Kepler and TESS. You should know I was operated by the French CNES Space Agency, which means the National Center for Space Studies. I was operated by the European Space Agency, when abbreviated as ESAUC. One of my major finds was Super Earth Karo 7B, an exoplanet orbit.
regarding the star Caro 7 you see another discovery was Caro 2b which does orbit the star Caro 2 so free Here's my 4 CCD camera and electronics, that's right. My baffle shields a telescope from extraneous light. My Proteus platform contains communication equipment, temperature and direction controls, you now know this. And on either side of me are my solar panels, that's right. They use the sun's radiation to power the satellite. From the Caro satellite, my mission was a delay. I was set out to bring rocket planets outside the solar system. Into sight. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. This is a lever, it's a simple machine made of a fulcrum and a rigid beam. The lever was first brought forth into 60 BC. That's who you see. This simple machine is made of a rigid beam and a fulcrum, as I mentioned. But what does that mean? First, let's look at the two parts of the lever that will be told the effort input force and the output force, which is the load. These two are applied to either end of the beam, just like this, which bounces on the fulcrum. The point in which the beam pivots when an effort is applied to one. is clever. This moves the mass upward due to torque towards the amount of force required to move this load north. Now what are the mechanical advantages that I'll imply? It has to do with how much force a simple machine does multiply. The further the effort is away from the fulcrum, the easier the load will move. Here's the lever classes for fun. The first class lever to show the closer the fulcrum is to the load, the less effort is needed. To move the load a shorter distance, you know the second class lever's loads located between the effort and fulcrum. The closer the fulcrum's to the load, the less effort's needed for the outcome. The third class lever's effort's located between the load and the fulcrum. If the fulcrum's closer to the load, then the less effort's needed to move it some. This is a lever. It's a simple machine made of a fulcrum and a rigid beam. One of the brightest comet scenes, C slash 1995-01, I was designated formally. I'm Comet Halbop, one of the brightest comets seen. In 1995 was my discovery. I was discovered by an astronomer, Alan Hale and Thomas Bob, the astronomer amateur. I was discovered before I was visible to the naked eye on July 23rd in 1995. Astronomers believe I originated from beyond Neptune, from the Oort cloud, which is 2,000 to 100,000 AU. My elliptical orbit is long, they can take around 200 years or even thousands to orbit the sun, just to be clear. I was one of the most widely observed comets in the 20th century in four minutes. Decades, one of the brightest seen. I passed perihelion in 1997, but it is unsure when I'll reach my aphelion. When I was visible to the naked eye for humans, it was so much fun. I was observed with the naked eye for about 18 months. I may have had a near collision with Jupiter in early June 2215 BC. I'm coming, hell one of the brightest comets seen C slash 1995-01 I was designated formally I'm Comet Halbop One of the brightest comets seen In 1995 was my discovery I have several types of tales That trail Let me tell you about all of them To impress they don't fail One is called the bright dust tail Created by the reflection of the sunlight From the streaming from the am I? The second is called the ion tail. It is more faint, made up of electrically charged atoms. I do hell. I was discovered with a rare third tail. You'll see, called the sodium tail, trailing from the back of me. I do have a nucleus, which is estimated to be about 30 to 40 kilometers across me. I am the first comet that astronomers did detect. 
attack The noble gas argon in which I reflect I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen C slash 1995-01, I was designated formally I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen In 1995 was my discovery Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. We are pyramids, yeah we're all man-made. We are architecture of new and ancient ancestry. We are pyramids of old and modern time we will show you our location come visit us and climb i'm the memphis pyramid in memphis tennessee built of steel and concrete modern tools built me i was built for sports and concerts in 1991 now used as a bass pro shop for fishermen fun isaac tigrep placed a crystal skull within me when it was removed, bad luck struck I'm known as the Tomb of Doom, you see 322 feet high and 10th largest on this list 535,000 square feet, now you know this I'm the Ben Pyramid in Deshur, Egypt built way back when I'm made of limestone blocks built by the hands of men I was built for Pharaoh Sneferu in the 4th Dynasty Yeah, I was constructed in 2600 BC at 344 feet tall in the ninth largest you see here come to egypt to visit me i'll be here for years i'm the red pyramid located in giza egypt made of red limestone my hue is why i was called this also built for pharaoh sneferu in the fourth dynasty it ranged from 2613 to 2589 bc at 345 feet tall i'm smooth sided not stepped I hope you come to explore me in Egypt This is the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada On the Strip, finished in 1993 Built with modern tools, I'm hip I have over 4,400 rooms that you can comfortably stay in I was built to entertain some people, lose some people win 350 feet tall, I'm made of glass and steel If you come to Vegas, come see me, I have curb appeal The Pyramid of Cafe He's Egypt's my location Made of huge limestone blocks Built by the hands of men Built for the tomb of the great pharaoh Khafre, you know The second largest and second tallest Pyramid of Giza I show I'm 448 feet tall Which puts me fifth on this list Come visit if you can Thanks for learning all this I'm the great pyramid of Giza Giza, Egypt's where you'll find me I'm the oldest and the largest Pyramid of the three Egyptologists believe I was built as a tomb for the 4th dynasty Egyptian Pharaoh Khufu. I was 481 feet before erosion occurred at all, but since that happened, now I'm 455 feet tall. The Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco, California, built with concrete, glass, and steel. I'm strong, I tell ya. My shape was built for environmental practicality, to let natural light and air flow reach the San Francisco streets. At 853 feet tall, I'm 7th tallest here, you know, but the 2nd tallest building in San Francisco, al Faisalia Center, in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, built with steel and concrete, and this I will share with ya, I was the first skyscraper built in Saudi Arabia, you know, there are many taller than me now, come visit me though, I'm 876 feet tall, if measured to my tip, I am considered a pyramid, and I'm 8th on this list, I'm called the Shard, I'm located in London, UK, I have 11,000 glass panels, come here and stay I'm 1,016 feet tall and take a pyramid shape I'm the tallest building in the UK, I like to skyscrape The Young Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea The world's tallest unoccupied building, I will show ya I'm considered the tallest modern pyramid of all At 1,082.7 feet tall We are pyramids, yeah we're all man-made We are architecture of new and ancient ancestry We are pyramids 
of old and modern time. We will show you our location. Come visit us and climb. We're the world's tallest buildings. Here to tell you about ourselves. The views from our tops are quite chilling. In the world's tallest buildings, we celebrate the architects who created us and the people we bring. I'm China Zun, the tallest building in Beijing. That is in China, in case you were wondering. At a height of 1731 feet tall, I was built by the CITIC, as I recall. 4.7 million square feet and 109 floors within me. I was completed in the year of 2018. Tianjin CTF Finance Center is my name, the second tallest building in Tianjin, China. That's my fame. My height is 1730. 39 feet in impressive size and I'm owned by Chow Tai Fook, the Enterprise. Over 2.7 million square feet and 97 floors inside me. I was completed in the year of 2019. Guangzhou City of Finance Center is located in Guangzhou, China. We hope you enter. Also 1739 feet tall. Also owned by Chow Tai Fook Enterprises, that's not all. I'm 5.4 million square feet and 111 floors completed in 2016 and I am adored. I am One World Trade Center and located in the state of New York in the USA I've been. I'm 1,792 feet from the ground to my tip, owned by New York and New Jersey Port Authority. Now this, I'm 3.5 million square feet and 94 floors I've seen and I was completed the year of 2014. I'm Latte World Tower, it's nice to meet ya. I am located in Seoul, South Korea. I'm 1,821 feet in height, owned by Latte. Property and development, that's right. At 3.2 million square feet and 123 floors, completed in 2016, come visit me on tour. Golden Finance 117 Tower Located in Tianjin, China and full of power 1957 feet tall, you know Golden Properties Holdings Develop me though You'll find 4 million square feet and 117 stories here My completion should be in 2020, the year I'm the Pingyang Finance Center There's nothing finer Located in Shenzhen within China It's 1966 feet from the ground to my tip Pingyang Group owns me Now you all know this 4.9 million square feet and 115 floors in lean I was completed in the year of 2017 Mecca Royal Hotel Clock Tower I will show ya Located in Mecca, Saudi Arabia I'm 1972 feet to my top And I'm government owned I'll be here till I drop 21.5 million square feet And 120 floors in me Completed in 2011 I think that is plenty I'm known as the Shanghai Tower Tallest tower in Shanghai, China I hope I empower 2073 feet from the sky to my cement I'm owned by Shanghai Tower Construction and Development Over 4 million square feet and 128 floors within Completed in 2014, where have you been? This is the Borsh Khalifa Located in Dubai In the United Arab Emirates That's where I climb high I'm 2722 feet tall from the ground to tip Owned by Amar Properties, yet I'm still hip with a total built up area of 5.6 million square feet and 163 floors, a size that can't be be completed in 2009. I'm the tallest tower in the world to date. If you ever make it to Dubai, to see me would be great. We're the world's tallest buildings, here to tell you about ourselves. The views from our tops are quite chilling in the world's tallest buildings. We celebrate the architects who created us and the people we bring shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters
We'll have a whale of a time deep in the ocean as we dive. You'll see the smallest of whales and see how large they can thrive. Whales are classified as mammals, you're a lot like them, you know. They're all milk secreting, warm blooded vertebrate animals. I'm a barnacle, I'm always stuck on a whale. I know a lot about them, I hope you enjoy this tale. Here's a dwarf sperm whale, its lengths around seven feet. Six hundred pounds and it loves to eat meat. They eat cephalopods. That's right, squids and octopus. They also love crustaceans, crab and shrimp. They taste really good. They're a toothed whale in a group called the Dontacity. They swim in temperate and tropical oceans to feel free. Here's a pygmy right whale at a length of twenty-one feet, weighing seventy-five hundred pounds. Finding food's no easy feat. They feed on copepods, a microscopic crustacean. They also feed on krill, a crustacean on the run. They filter feed their food through baleen and are classified in a group called Mr. Cetai. Here's a minky whale. They're about 18 feet and commonly weigh 12,000 pounds. To watch them is quite a treat. They feed primarily on krill and on some small schooling fish. Copepods are on their menu. That's one hefty dish. Minkies are classified as Mr. Cetai as well. That means they feed through baleen. They filter really swell. This is a gray whale at a length of 45 feet and weighs 60,000 pounds. They'll surface for you to meet. Amphipods are a gray whale's favorite food. They're tiny shrimp like animals, that's what they like to pursue. A brood as well, its length is 55 feet and weigh up to 30 tons. That's 60,000 pounds, you see. They mainly feed on crustaceans and cephalopods and fish too. They're part of the Mr. Cetai, a baleen whale, that's true. You know the humpback whale, 52 feet in length shown here. At 66,000 pounds, they don't have much fear. They mainly feed on krill and plankton filtered through baleen. Mr. Cetai is their class in the oceanic scene. Here's a say whale, 55 feet in their length at 100,000 pounds. You know they've got some strength. They feed Small fish and cephalopods, I'd say. Here's the right whale. They're 59 feet long and 160,000 pounds. I wonder how they get along. They feed on euphosiid and copepods now. Filtered through baleen, Mississippi, take a bow. Here's a bullhead whale. Their length's 59 feet long at 220,000 pounds. You're learning here in this song. Euphosiids and copepods. Pods are their main diet they lead. Mr. Cetai is their group filtering food through their baleen. Here you see a blue whale. Its length is 100 feet, 330,000 pounds. Staying afloat is quite a feat. They can eat four tons of krill on a daily basis. They're also Mr. Cetai. Thank you for learning this. We'll have a whale of a time deep in the ocean as we dive. You'll see the smallest of whales and see how large they can thrive. Whales are classified as mammals. You're a lot like them, you know. They're all milk secreting, warm blooded vertebrate animals. This is a size comparison of mountains in our solar system. So you know we all orbit the sun. We'll work from small to large until we're done. We're not all the mountains of the solar system, just the largest ones. My name is Makaloo. I'm on the planet Earth. I'm the fifth highest mountain in the world. You've learned this in this verse. I'm on the border of Nepal and China. I'm 5.26 miles tall. What could be finer? I'm Lotse on planet Earth as well. The fourth highest peak on Earth. On me not many dwell. I'm located on the border of China and Nepal. And in height I'm 5.29 miles tall. Kongchengjenga, Earth is what I call home. I'm the third highest peak above sea level on Earth come Rome. 
part of the Himalayas in Nepal and India you see At 5.33 miles tall I'm sure you'll notice me I'm known as K2, Earth is where I am found I'm the second highest mountain above sea level around In the Himalayas shared between China and Pakistan I'm 5.35 miles high if you visit have a plan I'm Mount Everest, Earth's my obvious location I'm the highest peak on Earth, above sea level, come here on vacation I call the Himalayas home, I separate China and Nepal I'm 5.49 miles in height, come climb me and have a ball I'm on Akea, the Earth is where I lay I'm on the island of Hawaii, where lots of people come to stay I'm the tallest mountain in the world, measured beneath the sea At my base at 6.34 miles high, come climb my mountain face I'm called Pavonis Mons on the planet of Mars. I'm bigger than Mauna Kea, so I'm raising the bar. I am seventh highest on this list and a giant in the skyline. It's 6.8 miles tall, a shield volcano am I. Elysium Mons, that's my name you had learned. I'm on the planet of Mars, let me continue my turn. I'm the eighth highest mountain on this list at 7.8 miles tall. I'm a volcano, be the first to climb my wall. I'm Ascreus Mons, also on Mars the planet. I come in ninth place on this list, this I admit I'm a large shield volcano located in the Tharsis region At 9.3 miles high, to climb me wouldn't be fun I'm Olympus Mons, I sit tall on the planet of Mars I'm the largest mountain in the solar system by far I'm a very large shield volcano and the biggest in our system My height is 13.7 miles high and now I'm done this is a size comparison of mountains in our solar system. So you know we all orbit the sun. We'll work from small to large until we're done. We're not all the mountains of the solar system, just the largest ones. We're the United States, brought to you here by size. When we reach the largest state, it may take you by surprise. We're the United States, brought to you here by size Freedom to love and learn is a privilege in which we take pride Rhode Island is first and smallest Delaware is next on the list Connecticut comes in third, you know Hawaii is an island and fourth is shown New Jersey is the fifth largest state Massachusetts is six, but we're really great. New Hampshire's seven, in the east we thrive. Vermont comes in eighth and still living life. Maryland ninth and here again. I'm West Virginia, in the land size I'm at 10. South Carolina 11 in land size. Maine is number 12, to get here is a drive. Indiana is happy to be 13th Virginia is 14th and it is beneath Kentucky's the 15th largest state Ohio is 16th but we're still great I am Tennessee coming in at 17th Louisiana is 18th yeah you know what I mean Pennsylvania is the 19th largest Mississippi is 20, that's a must New York State is 21 in the song North Carolina is 22 and we're pretty long and Alabama's 23 as you can see Arkansas is 24, that's what we be Florida is 25 and a halfway point Wisconsin is 26 up in this joint I'm Illinois, I rank at 27 Iowa is next, 28 better than 11 Michigan will win, coming in at 29 Georgia is number 30 and we are so fine 
We are Washington, we will rank as 31. And Oklahoma's 32 and this song isn't done. Missouri has no worries at 33. North Dakota's 34, as you can see. South Dakota is in at 35. Nebraska's 36, you heard this here live. Minnesota will take the number 37. Kansas is 38, I know you were betting. Utah is ranked 39th largest state. Idaho is number 40, I tell you, mate. Oregon is 41 in the Pacific Northwest. Wyoming is 42, for this we feel blessed. I'm Colorado, I am happy to be 43. Nevada is 44, as you can plainly see. Arizona is 45 in this mix. New Mexico is coming in at 46. Montana Rick's 47, you just learn. California's 48, now I'm done my turn. And Texas will come in at 49. Alaska's the largest state, number 50 feels fine. We're the United States, brought to you here by size. When we reach the largest state, it may take you by surprise. We're the United States, brought to you here by size. Freedom to love and learn is a privilege in which we take pride. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. We're the United States of America, we're 50 strong and proud. Here's the names of all our states and their capitals sing loud. My name is Alabama, my capital's Montgomery. Welcome to Alaska, Juno's a great place to see. I am Arizona, my capital is Phoenix. My name's Arkansas, my little rock is so scenic. I'm California, dude. Sacramento's my capital. Come to Colorado, visit Denver if you go. I'm Connecticut, my capital is Hadford. Welcome to Delaware, visit Dover if you're bored. My name is Florida, Tallahassee's a place to be. I am Georgia, Atlanta's a great city. Aloha, I'm Hawaii. Come to Idaho, visit Boise when you go. We're the United States of America, we're 50 strong and proud. Here's the names of all our states and their capitals sing loud. Welcome to Illinois, Springfield is a place to see. If you visit Indiana, Indianapolis is in me. I am Iowa, Des Moines is my capital. And if you Kansas, Topeka has it all. Welcome to Kentucky. Frankfurt is a nice city. Down here in Louisiana, Baton Rouge is real pretty. Up here in Maine, Augusta is really nice. Here in Maryland, Annapolis is worth its price. Visit Massachusetts. Boston's a little bean. Up here in Michigan, Lansing is worth the sea. Hey, it's Minnesota, St. Paul's our capital. But down in Mississippi, Jackson is the place to roll. We're the United States of America, we're 50 strong and proud. Here's the names of all our states and their capitals sing loud. Hi there, I'm Missouri, Jefferson City. Stop by Lincoln, it's a city. In Nevada, Carson City is the one we think is pretty. New Hampshire welcomes you. Visit Concord anytime. If you stop by New Jersey, Trenton is quite a find. I am New Mexico, my capital, Santa Fe. New York's the Empire State, Albany's where you can stay. Here in North Carolina, you can see Raleigh.
top 10 largest islands of the world, yes we are. We're here to tell you our size, small to large. We're the top 10 largest islands in the world, here we are. Here's our land area in square miles, let's set the bar. I'm Ellesmere Island in the territory of Nunavut, located in Canada, a country I know true. Ellesmere Island's in the Arctic Ocean all the while, my area is 75,767 square miles. I'm Great Britain, an island in the UK that's located in Europe. I hope you hear what I say. I'm touching the North Sea and the North Atlantic at 80,823 square miles. I'm big but not gigantic. I'm Victoria Island. I'm split between the Northwest Territory and Nunavut geographically. I'm in the Arctic Ocean in a part of Canada at 83,896 square miles all BC and ya. Yeah. I'm Honshu Island located in Japan. I'm the country's main island just so you understand. I touch the Sea of Japan and the North Pacific with 88,016 square miles to be more specific. I'm the island of Sumatra in Indonesia. I'm the largest island in this country that I shared with ya. I do touch the Northeast Indian Ocean with style at 182,800 12 square miles. I'm the Baffin Island, also in Nunavut, in the country of Canada, in which I do salute. I touch the North Atlantic and the Arctic Ocean too, with 195,928 square miles, it's true. I'm Madagascar off the coast of Africa. I am an island country, the one you just saw. I touch the Indian Ocean and Mozambique Channel with 226,658 square miles for me to handle. The island of Borneo is what you're looking at. I'm Asia's largest island, that's a fact I can back. I touch a vast amount of seas located around me. I have 287,000 one square miles for you to see. I am New Guinea, the world's second largest island located within Oceania. It's where I make my stand. I touch the Pacific Ocean and some amazing seas. 303,476 square miles, that's a lot of me. I am Greenland, the largest island on earth located between the Arctic and Atlantic Ocean for what it's worth. With 836,300 square miles to roam just east of northern Canada is where I call home We're the top 10 largest islands of the world, yes we are We're here to tell you our size, small to large We're the top 10 largest islands in the world, here we are Here's our land area in square miles, let's set the bar Shop our new store merch And get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters This is a country comparison by size We'll show you with our square mileage Yeah, we'll keep you advised With this country comparison by size We'll go from small to large It may come as some surprise I'm Vatican City and Monaco This is Nauru and Tuvalu did show San Marino here and Liechtenstein the Marshall Islands, St. Kitts and Nevis are fine. Maldives are next, Malta is small. I'm Granada, St. Vincent and Grenadines to call. Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, the Seychelles. Hello, it's nice to meet ya. Pandora is here, St. Lucia, there's more. Micronesia and Singapore. Welcome to Tonga. Dominica, you see, I am Bahrain and Karabati, Sao Tome and Principe, Mauritius is close, this is Luxembourg, and I'm Comoros, here's Samoa, Cape Verde in your eye, Trinidad and Tobago, then Brunei, this is Cyprus, and Lebanon, Jamaica Mon, Gambia's the one, Here's Qatar and Vanuatu, 
Montenegro, Bahamas stays true. East to more than Swaziland, Kuwait and Fiji understand. Slovenia and El Salvador, Israel believes there's more. Djibouti, Macedonia, Rwanda, Haiti showed ya. Burundi, Equatorial Guinea, Solomon Islands, Albania, you see, Armenia, I'm Lesotho, Belgium, Moldova sees you, Guinea Bissau, and I'm Bhutan, Switzerland, Netherlands has got it going on, Denmark, Estonia, Dominican Republic, and Slovakia, and Costa Rica, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Togo, nice to meet ya, Latvia, Lithuania, Sri Lanka, and Georgia, the Republic of Ireland, Sierra Leone here, Panama, Czech Republic just appeared, the United Arab Emirates, Austria, Azerbaijan and Serbia, Jordan, Portugal, Hungary, South Korea is full, Iceland, Guatemala, Cuba, Bulgaria, Liberia, Honduras, I'm Benin, Eritrea won't fuss, Malawi, North Korea, peace, Nicaragua, and I am Greece, Tajikistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Tunisia has it all, Suriname, Uruguay, Cambodia, Syria is fly, Senegal, Kyrgyzstan, Belarus, Guyana has a plan, Laos, Romania, I'm gonna, Uganda see ya, the United Kingdom, I'm Guinea, Gabon, New Zealand, that is me, Burkina Faso, Ecuador, Philippines, Italy, on to more, Oman, and Poland, Ivory Coast, in Malaysia I stand, Vietnam, Finland that's me, Republic of the Congo, in Germany, Japan, in Norway, Zimbabwe, Paraguay I say, Iraq, Morocco, Uzbekistan, Sweden the show, Papua New Guinea, Cameroon, Turkmenistan, Spain will see you soon, Thailand, Yemen is far, Kenya, and Madagascar, Botswana, Ukraine is what I pick, South Sudan, Central African Republic, Somalia, France, Afghanistan, Myanmar stands a chance, Zambia, Chile, Turkey, Mozambique, come and play, Namibia, Pakistan, Venezuela, Nigeria on demand, Tanzania, Egypt you saw, Mauritania, and Bolivia, Ethiopia, Colombia you see, South Africa, and I am Mali, Angola, Niger, Chad, Peru, there's nothing finer, Mongolia, Iran, Libya, Sudan, Indonesia, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Algeria, Kazakhstan, Argentina, India is the plan, 
Australia, Brazil is south, China is here, USA is not south, I'm Canada, Russia is the last and the biggest country in the world, I have class. This is a country comparison by size, we'll show you with our square mileage, yeah we'll keep you advised with this country comparison by size. We'll go from small to large, it may come as some surprise. Well it's thick on one end, it tapers to a thin edge, it's called a simple machine, and it's called the wedge. Often made of stone, wood, metal, or plastic, I do pledge a simple machine, triangular in shape, is called the wedge. A wedge's main job is to be used as a splitting tool with force directed on top of the wedge to force an object to split in two. Some examples of a wedge are listed and shown here. An axe, knife, doorstop, nail, or snow plow I do share. Here is a wedge, it's used for splitting cord wood. We start by placing the sharp edge of the wedge on top of the wood. Before the wedge can split the wood, it needs a force to direct it down. We'll use a sledgehammer to hit the flat part of the wedge with a pound. When the force is applied to the top of this wedge in this instance, that drives into the piece of the wood, overcoming the wood's resistance. The force directed downwards forces the wood's direction to change as one piece becomes two pieces from the wedge in its exchange. There are two main types of wedges. You will find a single and the double. Let's find out how these are defined. The single wedge has only one angle side, like how a doorstop or a chisel is designed. The double wedge has two angled sides, using double the force when it's applied. What's well, thick on one end and tapers to a thin edge, it's called a simple machine, and it's called the wedge. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I'm the second of two rovers launched in 2003. I search for ancient water on Mars. I'm opportunity. After landing on Mars in 2004, I made a number of discoveries. One was minerals dispersed by groundwater causing rock cavities. I happen to be a record holder lasting 15 years on Mars. I was planned for a 90 day mission on the red planet among the stars. I'm the twin of a robot called Spirit that launched before me. Here's a look at my parts, we'll explore and see. I have panoramic cameras on the top of my camera bar to show NASA what I see on Mars near and far. I've sent 217,594 raw images back to Earth to be reviewed by scientists. The miniature thermal emission spectrometer or mini test you now see provides measurements of mineralogy and thermal physical properties. The magnet array is in the front of me grabbing dust at a Mass, collecting magnetic grains of the red planet's past. The pan cam calibration target looks like a sundial with a tin. It helps fine tune observations from imagers and instruments. My robotic arm instruments do work as a human geologist would, holding and using science tools with its hand or turret like it should. I have six wheels to truck me around the Martian surface. You see, I have traveled 28 miles and down slopes at 32 degrees. This is my multi panel solar array generating 140 watts of power up to four hours per soul a Martian day. The storm stopped me on my record breaking lawn mission in 2018. I permanently stopped transmitting information. On the second of two rovers launched in 2003, I searched for ancient water on Mars. I'm opportunity. On the Karo satellite, my mission was a delay. I was set out to bring rocky planets outside the solar system into sight. And I found extra solar planets with short orbital periods, mostly those of large terrestrial size to show adults and kids. The name Karo when broken down, it does mean 
Convection, rotation, and planetary transit, that is me. I was launched on December 27 in 2006 atop the Suez 2.1B rocket. I had opened the way for more advanced probes, such as Kepler and TESS. You should know, I was operated by the French CNES Space Agency, which means the National Center for Space Studies. I was operated by the European Space Agency, when abbreviated as ESAUC. One of my major finds was Super Earth Caro 7B, an exoplanet orbiting the star Caro 7, you see. Another discovery was Caro 2B, which does orbit the star Caro 2 so free. Here's my 4 CCD camera in electronics, that's right. My baffle shields a telescope from extraneous light. My Proteus platform contains communication equipment, temperature and direction controls, you now know this. And on either side of me are my solar panels, that's right. They use the sun's radiation to power the satellite. From the Caro satellite, my mission was a delay. I was set out to bring rocket planets outside the solar system. Into sight. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. This is a lever, it's a simple machine made of a fulcrum and a rigid beam. The lever was first brought forth into 60 BC. That's who you see. This simple machine is made of a rigid beam and a fulcrum, as I mentioned. But what does that mean? First, let's look at the two parts of the lever that will be told the effort input force and the output force, which is the load. These two are applied to either end of the beam, just like this, which bounces on the fulcrum, the point in which the beam pivots. When an effort is applied to one end, is clever. This moves a mass upward due to torque towards the amount of force required to move this load north. Now what are the mechanical advantages that I'll imply? It has to do with how much force a simple machine does multiply. The further the effort is away from the fulcrum, the easier the load will move. Here's the lever classes for fun. The first class lever to show the closer the fulcrum Levers loads located between the effort and fulcrum. The closer the fulcrums to the load, the less efforts needed for the outcome. The third class levers efforts located between the load and the fulcrum. If the fulcrum's closer to the load, then the less efforts needed to move it some. This is a lever. It's a simple machine made of a fulcrum and a rigid beam. One of the brightest comet scenes, C slash 19501. I was designated formally. I'm Comet Halbop, one of the brightest comets seen in 1995 was my discovery. I was discovered by an astronomer. Alan Hale and Thomas Bob, the astronomer amateur. I was discovered before I was visible to the naked eye on July 23rd in 1995. Astronomers believe I originated from beyond Neptune, from the Oort cloud, which is 2,000 to 100,000 AU. My elliptical orbit is long, they can take around 200 years or even thousands to orbit the sun, just to be clear. I was one of the most widely observed comets in the 20th century in four many decades, one of the brightest seen. I passed perihelion in 1997, but it is unsure when I'll reach my aphelion. When I was visible to the naked eye for humans, it was so much fun. I was observed with the naked eye for about 18 months. I may have had a near collision with Jupiter in early June 2215 BC. I'm Comet Hellbop, 
one of the brightest comic scenes C slash 199501 I was designated formally I'm Comet Hellbop One of the brightest comics seen In 1995 was my discovery I have several types of tales That trail Let me tell you about all of them To impress they don't fail One is called the Bright Dust Tail Created by the reflection of the sunlight From the streaming from the comet Am I? The second is called the Ion Tail It is more faint Made up of electrically charged atoms I do hell I was discovered with a rare third tail You'll see called the sodium tail Trailing from the back of me I do have a nucleus Which is estimated to be about 30 to 40 kilometers across me I am the first comet that astronomers did detect The noble gas argon in which I reflect I'm Comet Hellbop one of the brightest comet seen C slash 1995 I was designated formally I'm Comet Hellbop One of the brightest comets seen In 1995 was my discovery Shop our new store merch And get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters We are pyramids, yeah we're all man-made We are architecture of new and ancient ancestry We are pyramids of old and modern time We will show you our location, come visit us and climb I'm the Memphis Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee Built of steel and concrete, modern tools built me I was built for sports and concerts in 1991 Now used as a Bass Pro Shop for fishermen fun Isaac Tigret placed a crystal skull within me when it was removed, bad luck struck I'm known as the Tomb of Doom, you see 322 feet high and 10th largest on this list 535,000 square feet, now you know this I'm the Ben Pyramid in Deshur, Egypt Built way back when I'm made of limestone blocks Built by the hands of men I was built for Pharaoh Sneferu In the 4th Dynasty Yeah, I was constructed in 2600 BC At 344 feet tall all in the ninth largest you see here Come to Egypt to visit me I'll be here for years I'm the Red Pyramid Located in Giza, Egypt Made of red limestone My hue is why I was called this Also built for Pharaoh Sneferu In the 4th Dynasty It ranged from 2613 to 2589 BC At 345 feet tall I'm smooth sided, not stepped I hope you come to explore me In Egypt this is the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada on the Strip Finished in 1993, built with modern tools, I'm hip I have over 4,400 rooms that you can comfortably stay in I was built to entertain some people, lose some people win 350 feet tall, I'm made of glass and steel If you come to Vegas, come see me, I have curb appeal The Pyramid of Cafe, Giza, Egypt's my location Made of huge limestone blocks built by the hands of men built for the tomb of the great pharaoh Khafre you know the second largest and second tallest pyramid of Giza I show I'm 448 feet tall which puts me fifth on this list come visit if you can thanks for learning all this I'm the great pyramid of Giza Giza Egypt's where you'll find me I'm the oldest and the largest pyramid of the three Egyptologists believe I was built as a tomb For the 4th Dynasty Egyptian Pharaoh Khufu I was 481 feet before erosion occurred at all But since that happened now I'm 455 feet tall The Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco, California Built with 
of concrete, glass, and steel. I'm strong, I tell ya. My shape was built for environmental practicality. To let natural light and air flow reach the San Francisco streets. At 853 feet tall, I'm seventh tallest here, you know. But the second tallest building in San Francisco. Alpha Isalia Center in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Built with steel and concrete, and this I will share with ya. I was the first skyscraper built in Saudi Arabia, you know. There are many taller than me now, come visit me though. I'm 876 feet tall, if measured to my tip, I am considered a pyramid and I'm 8th on this list. I'm called the Shard, I'm located in London, UK. I have 11,000 glass panels, come here and stay. I'm 1,016 feet tall and take a pyramid shape. I'm the tallest building in the UK, I like to skyscrape. Ryong Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea. The world's tallest unoccupied building, I will show ya. I'm considered the tallest modern pyramid of all at 1,082.7 feet tall. We are pyramids, yeah, we're all man made. We are architecture of new and ancient ancestry. We are pyramids. Of old and modern time, we will show you our location. Come visit us and climb. Thanks for watching KLT. Please subscribe to this channel, like our videos, and check out the KLT merch store.